we're going to look at electrochemistry and um, multiple reactions where we have electron transfer from one atom to the other. So often this is called oxidation reduction or redox for short. So I want to start with a combination reaction and this would be for the formation of sodium chloride. So if we have sodium, the element, it would occur in the form of a solid and chlorine the element. If we bubbled chlorine gas over sodium we'd have a very exothermic reaction and the formation of the salt, sodium chloride. So there we've got the balanced equation. And if we remember we're going to consider oxidation states and oxidation states or, or sometimes called oxidation number those are usually charges. That would be the case for a simple ionic compound. And if we remember the fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine like to have a negative one charge. So these elements steal, or these atoms steal electrons from metals. So column one, the oxidation state is always a plus one if there's a charge. Column two is plus two. The transition metals have variable charges. So we'll be looking at uh, those types of reactions. So remember elements have a charge of zero. So chlorine is a diatomic element. During this combination reaction, chlorine steals an electron from sodium and sodium loses its electron to chlorine. So we would say that the sodium metal with a charge of zero was oxidized to sodium plus one ion, oops, oxidized to sodium plus one, the ion, and chlorine, an atom of chlorine, was reduced to Cl minus one. Okay. Another common combination reaction is the formation of rust. So we're going to take a look at that one also. The element iron, which is a nice shiny metal, in the presence of oxygen will also undergo a combination reaction, but since these elements each have a charge of zero and the formation is an ionic compound, then electrons definitely have to be transferred for the charges to change. So this is commonly known as rust or iron three oxide would be the systematic name for that. And in this case, oxygen in a simple ionic compound is always going to have the negative two charge. And iron in this case, we could calculate its oxidation state would be a plus three. So again, the metal was oxidized. Iron is oxidized to iron plus three. And an oxygen atom is reduced to the oxide ion, O minus two. The opposite of a combination reaction is decomposition. So that would also most generally be an oxidation reduction reaction. We're going to look at a single replacement reaction next. And if we consider um, two metals, what we're going to end up doing is looking at the activity series. So this was out of an earlier chapter. The activity series, if we recall, shows metals categorized and the ease of oxidation increasing. So we should know by now that column one and two metals are very active or reactive. In fact, if we throw sodium in water, it explodes. Uh, potassium will catch on fire. So these column one and two metals are very reactive and that means it's very easy for these metals to become oxidized or to lose an electron. The metals at the bottom of the activity series, these are difficult to oxidize. 
So gold stays nice, shiny gold metal for a long time. It's very difficult to oxidize that. When silver oxidizes, typically the tarnish that we see on silver is a silver sulfide. And again, the element sulfur with the element silver would undergo a combination reaction. And so this is the black compound that we have to rub off of the metal. So typically, oxidation is bad for a metal. It weakens its properties and so forth. But if we look again, uh, I think before we start that, just to re recall here, oxygen uh, is an oxidizer. So there's a lot of tricks to remembering the loss or gain of electrons. But if we remember that oxidation is named uh, with the same root word as oxygen, and that's because oxygen, the element, there's such an abundance of that. And oxygen likes to be reduced or it likes to ha have a negative two charge. So whenever oxygen is in a compound, whether it's ionic or even covalent, for example, uh, the charge on the oxygen is typically a minus two. In fact, that's one of our rules for figuring out oxidation states. So oxygen is an oxidizer, which means it does the oxidizing. And again, typically metals get oxidized. So oxygen does the oxidizing, and it gets reduced to the oxide ion, or in other words, O with the minus 2 charge. So that's oxide. Okay. If we look at a, another type of reaction that's common, now going back to the activity series, I'm going to show us a reaction of copper 2 sulfate. So I've got a solution of one molar copper sulfate. So obviously copper plus 2 does not have the same properties as the element copper, which would be copper metal. So in this case, copper has an oxidation state of plus 2, and here is the sulfate ion, which is a minus 2 charge. So if I react some copper sulfate with some solid zinc metal, we are going to see a reaction occur. So I'm going to put some copper 2 sulfate in here, about 5 milliliters. And those of us in the southwest, uh, there's a very popular stone, turquoise, and so the copper 2 in the, that mineral gives turquoise its nice color. So here's actually about 10 milliliters of copper 2 sulfate in solution. And if I pour about half a gram of zinc into that solution, so I'm not weighing that out, but that, that could be more like a gram. If we add the zinc to the sulfur, we don't see a very vigorous reaction occurring. But we should see the formation of some copper metal and that will plate onto the zinc. So if we stir this up a little bit, and I can't exactly point the camera to the side without dumping this over. But if we give this another little stir, if I decant the solution off of the top, we'll see that what we have in the beaker, we might be able to tell that that's copper metal. Uh, if I pour this back onto the plastic, it just looks like a big blob of, of black stuff. Uh, that didn't work out very well, but the copper, solid copper, actually ends up coming out of solution in place of the zinc. And if I had a waste beaker here, which I already used, um, if I, if we could judge these two, the copper two in solution is at a higher concentration here than in this solution. 
So if I could look at uh, this one on the right, this one should be more diluted as our copper plus two came out of solution as solid copper. So that chemical reaction I'm going to write down here. We took solid zinc, which would have an oxidation state of zero since it's an element, and we reacted that with aqueous copper sulfate, so this was dissolved in solution. And in this type of reaction, often called a single replacement, the zinc replaces the copper. So zinc goes into solution as zinc plus two, that would be aqueous, and our solid copper formed. So in this case, our zinc was oxidized to zinc plus two, and our copper two in solution, this, the nice pretty blue solution, the copper two was reduced to solid copper. So copper plus two, this would be in solution, was reduced to solid copper. And we may have been required to predict whether this reaction would occur or not using the activity series. So if we call, if we recall how to use this, the metal higher on the activity series is going to be oxidized, or the reaction will proceed in this direction. Since zinc is higher than copper on the activity series, then the solid zinc metal that we added to the copper, the zinc metal, did get oxidized and go into solution, and the copper, the ion that was in solution, was reduced back down to solid copper. So that would be one other type of reaction that would be considered an oxidation reduction reaction. And we're going to eventually look at an electrochemical cell in which we have both of these compounds in solution and then both of the solid metals. Just as a reminder, I want to look at a combustion reaction. For example, the simplest one uh, the simplest hydrocarbon, methane, in the presence of oxygen will make CO2 and H2O. This also falls in the category of an oxidation reduction reaction because in this compound, carbon has an oxidation state of minus four, and that is because of rules for hydrogen. When hydrogen is in a compound, it's considered to be a plus one. When oxygen is in a compound, it's a minus two. So since we have four hydrogen plus ones, we're going to say that carbon has an oxidation state of minus four. In this case, this is not really a charge. So oftentimes, for a simple ionic compound, the actual charge is the oxidation number. But when we have molecules who share electrons, when there is no charge transfer within the compound, we still state that a, a, an atom has an oxidation number. Oops. So in this case, carbon is minus four. And in the case of CO2, since oxygen is going to have a minus two charge in a compound, then the oxidation state of this carbon would be a plus four. So here, carbon's a plus four. So in a combustion reaction, um, the carbon can either get oxidized or reduced. So in this case, our carbon minus four gets oxidized to carbon plus four. So electron transfer is uh, very common in many reactions. Cell respiration, C6H12O6, that would occur in the presence of oxygen. We would have the formation of CO2 and H2O. So this, in this case, 
Our carbon, I believe, has an oxidation state of zero. If we have 12 hydrogens, each being uh, plus one charge, and then we have six oxygens. Each oxygen is a negative two charge. So we'd have uh, carbon, since sh this sugar has a charge of zero, the carbons also have to have an oxidation state of zero. And in carbon dioxide, again, our oxidation state is a plus four. So uh, many reactions are oxidation reduction reactions. What we're going to do in this chapter is to go beyond the activity series and instead of just stating whether or not a reaction would occur, we're going to use another chart which actually has potentials listed for various metals and we would actually be able to calculate the cell potential for a chemical reaction. So looking at zinc being reduced in this case to solid zinc metal and in this case copper too being reduced to copper. So when we look at this table, this table is written in terms of reduction as opposed to the activity series where the activity series is listed in terms of the metals most easily oxidized. But if we look at the case with our zinc and copper cell, well if we had this set up as a cell, we could actually calculate the cell potential by for this reaction using these reduction potentials for different half reactions. And if we remember Hess's law, and we know that these are thermodynamic properties, we can uh, combine reactions to come up with the overall thermodynamic property. So if we look at copper being reduced versus zinc being reduced, and we recall the activity series that zinc prefers to be oxidized, where copper is going to get reduced, then we can write a net reaction from this. So since our copper is getting reduced here, we can have our copper plus two, and in order to get reduced, copper has to gain two electrons, and that would become our solid copper. And then if we flip the direction of this reaction, and write zinc on the left, so switch products to reactants, and we end up with zinc plus two, plus two electrons. When we do that, we can just change the direction of this sign. So this reaction running backwards would produce a plus 0.763 volts, and our copper reaction, copper two being reduced to copper, this says plus three three seven, so that's a little hard to see. This reaction would proceed as written. So according to Hess's law, we can add these. And so we would get a, could get a potential of 1.10 volts. So we will be looking at calculating a cell potential as well in this section.